Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great show. We're going to talk about castrating beef cattle. And my guest is Dr. Matt Meisner, who's a, a clinical associate professor here at the Kansas State Veterinary Teaching Hospital. Sure glad you joined us and stay tuned. I'm Dennis Tebow. My wife and I, Kathy, are the owners of Wolf Creek Cattle Company. We have grown to approximately 70 bulls. I'm Reese Arnold. I'm the livestock manager at Wolf Creek Cattle Company. You know, these are not just like normal cattle. These cattle, they're hauled anywhere from, you know, eight to 10 hours a day across the United States and asked to perform. Multi-Man 90 keeps them kind of level. It maintains and balances their system. The stress level is less when, you know, when everything's right and working right, then they're working right. Close caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Thanks for joining me today. Glad to be here. It's always good to have you, Matthew. Uh, folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner. He is a clinical associate professor here at the uh, Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. You're boarded in food animal medicine and surgery. Internal medicine. Internal so. medicine. And it's always a pleasure to have you here on the show. And today we're talking about something that we do routinely in the beef industry, but it's always a topic of discussion, and that's castrating beef calves. Right. One of those, I guess, uh, procedures that has to be done and has been done for decades, if not centuries, but uh, for many reasons, but still comes up as a as a topic of how can we do it better how can we prevent certain complications and uh, even to the point does it really need to be done so yeah it's one of those procedures that just stands the test of time but is is a necessary uh, thing as far as uh, production in veterinary medicine as well so people think of it sometimes as something that's routine it's easy but man when you start to think about the geographical location and age of the animals and the expertise of the people doing it and the facilities and it can get a little bit complex right yeah i mean and it's a procedure that's done by a wide range of people i mean yeah from the lay person to the experienced producer to the veterinarian and um and everybody has their own skill level you know and, and uh and it just it's just one of those things that it's just a uh, it's just a a constant a constant topic and, uh, and a good thing to talk about. It, it needs to be talked about. So. Yep. Well, let's start out with timing because I think that's the first thing is when do we need to be castrating these calves? Sure. And, and uh, you know, regardless of whatever method we use, I think the bottom line is any time we can do it early, swift, and efficiently, um, that's that's the whatever technique is used, that's, that's when we need to do it. And uh, it's, it's easier on the animal, it's easier on us, and there's a lot less complications that can arise. And certainly those, the, the timing part of that has uh, even been addressed as in uh, beef quality assurance type uh, recommendations. And sometimes as early, you'd like to do it before three months. And uh, calves are, are small, testicles are small, blood vessels are small, um, and overall perception is a lot uh, easier on the animal. And you so bet. we do it quick and efficiently um, early on. I always tell the students that the longer the testicles are attached to the calf, the more attached the calf is to the testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so true with a lot of things. Early <laughs> castration is important. I think timing and like what you said. Um, anything else on the timing? Well, it's not always possible to do it you know, within three months, because some of the purebred guys and some of the different production parameters are going to need to wait for production uh, phenotype growth characteristics, those kind of things, to make assessments on who they're going to castrate. So sometimes we're going to have to castrate older animals. Right. And so let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion on beef cattle castration with Dr. Meisner, and we'll get past the timing and into some of the techniques at different ages and sizes. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Getting ready to work cattle for pre-breeding and calf vaccinations? There's no better time to use a safe, modified live virus vaccine to prevent BRD. 
Titanium provides the correct equation for BRD with its excellent safety profile and a strong response and long duration of immunity. Ask your veterinarian about modified live virus vaccines and the eight convenient combinations of titanium for the perfect pairing of performance and value. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. In the last three years, we've changed some things in our AI protocol, one of which was the use of multi-min. We've seen a significant increase in our AI pregnancy rate. The cost of an embryo program is significant, and we feel that if we were able to even get one more pregnancy out of, out of a cow, uh, that would pay for the whole cost of the whole bottle of multi-min right there. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normos in LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner and we work at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and we're talking today about castrating beef bulls and talked about timing and now we'll talk about a couple of different, or more than a couple, but the different techniques that are out there that are available. Sure, it, um, you know, a multitude of, of ways have been uh, described about how to do it and uh, certainly the comfort of the operator is going to be some of the decision making but uh, I think you kind of have a big, about two broad categories meaning some being bloodless and some being surgical. You right. Know, get a little bit of blood um, and the bloodless kind of castration uh, methods uh, deal more with kind of a, a, a blood flow issue, trying to prevent it and getting, getting things to, uh, to either atrophy or, uh, or be removed without doing any kind of surgery. And uh, certainly hemorrhage is not our only complication. So um, with those different techniques, uh, we have uh, some that are swift, some that are more effective than others, um, some that are more um, complete than others, I guess, you, think. Yeah. you know, and so, you know, for surgery, we basically think we're removing the scrotum and then taking the testicles out. And uh, um, there's a few ways to get that, uh, uh, get the, the, the testicles out of the scrotum, which is uh, either a knife cut. Or straight across, straight where, across. where you cut the, the lower half of the scrotum off and mm -hmm. remove it. Uh, or a Newberry knife, which splits the scrotum, um, and then the testicles fall out. And honestly, when I was, uh, Younger, I mean, I was patted myself on the sharpest knife in the in the pen, you know. Right. Um, a couple of nice scars to prove that. <laughs> um, in addition to that, when we have an open open blade, we have a chance uh, or risk for cutting the animal itself. And so, teaching teaching students has led me to re recognize that occasionally you can have an open blade and lead to some complications. And there's there's two approaches that I used to do. One is from behind the calf, and the other one is to drop the side open and pull a leg back Correct. if you have a, a shepherd's crook type thing to to pull that leg back getting clear access and something where where you're you're maintaining kind of safety that and uh, as, as well as yourself or the operators you bet you know, kick and kick one of the th one of the tricks i used to do too was take my knife to the grinder and grind the tip off yeah yeah so the tip won't nip nip the nip the inside of the leg or something like that so with surgical castration the entrance is going to be either a transsectional incision with a Newberry knife or we're going to cut that scrotum off. What's the next uh, step with that as far as you've exteriorized the, the testicles now? Um, getting good access to the, to the blood vessels in the cord and, and that means getting it stripped away far enough that you can see where the blood vessels are and, uh, and the spermatic cord and before you start to ligate it. You can what are the different it. ways to remove the testicles? Um, well, one, if they're really small and you do it quick and early and swift, is just to fray that off and gently pull that uh, that cord. It mm -hmm. snaps back and the blood the blood stops. Other way is a is an emasculator, which crushes the cord, yep. prevents bleeding. Sometimes we actually ligate them. You know, take some suture and ligate those down. Another one is to spin uh, the testicle and, and get some contraction there. 
But, cool. Uh, anyway, a bunch of ways to stop the bleeding. Excellent, excellent. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Meisner on castration of bull calves. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. Welcome back to Doc Talk, folks. This is Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm joined by Dr. Matt Meisner. And Matt is a clinical associate professor of the Veterinary uh, Health Center here at Kansas State University. He's uh, boarded in internal medicine, and we're talking about castrating bull calves. And our last segment we discussed surgical castration and now let's talk about some of the bloodless castration techniques sure. specifically banding yeah, yeah and there's several ways to do that and basically we're attaching a really tight ligature around the scrotum being a rubber band or, a, or a, some surgical tubing for larger bulls right. um, that will stop blood flow to the entire scrotum and testicles um, in which case then the body kind of walls that off and the, uh, the scrotum and testicles just fall off, you know, or atrophy. And, and that would be the case with, with more of a crush type technique. But the banding uh, techniques, uh, we have different sizes of, of bands that uh, um, need to be tailored to the size of animal you've got. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't get that band tight enough, uh, you won't get the effect you need. And, right. uh, and then you get into some major kind of issues, complications that can arise. Yeah, when, when we're talking about um, castration, and, and I'll throw you a little bit of a, of a curveball, but when we're, we're talking about recommendations for uh, controlling pain in these techniques, what are some of the practices that we do or can do to prevent pain during surgical castration or? or, he, he, or yeah. Huge. I mean, that's a huge issue um, and a huge topic, and and something that should be addressed anytime we can. And one, we can 
limit some of the acute kind of sharp pain that we can get just with some local anesthetics, some lidocaine, just like you'd get from any type of wound you get to get right. sutured up. And so we can do that and that stops some of that. But then we have some after effects. There's going to be some pain that arises after the procedure. Banding and those kind of things will result in from every bit of most of the work that we see is going to be a longer duration. So right. we need some anti-inflammatories after that. Because the uh, pain with those is not immediate. It, it's more delayed, two sure. to three weeks. Sure. And, yeah. and the scrotum and testicles fall off at 21 to 28 days. Right. So maybe some longer term analgesic. Um, as the animal gets bigger, this becomes more of an issue. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, it gets back to the timing. Correct. You know, the longer the longer it takes for the overall effect to take effect, the longer that we're going to have for the, for the pain. I mean, the Berdizo type things or a crushing issue would be acute pain with a with a longer kind of duration for that to fall off. But we have to address that. Yeah, acutely as well as the, as well as what's going on. So, it's, like I say, a surgical thing usually is quick and over, um, and uh, a little less. So maybe more of the acute pain control with the surgical castration, long term pain control. Look at that with the using the the banding or the crushing type techniques. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, and still a lot of debate and a lot of science left to do on this. Yeah, it's a difficult science and uh, to really just to, to really quantify it, you know. You bet. And uh, but a lot of people smarter than me are figuring, trying to figure that out. That's great. Well, we always want to do what we can to can control the pain and and uh, make the right decisions. When we come back from break, we're gonna wrap up with Dr. Meisner. We're gonna talk about some of the complications that can occur with castrating bulk caps. You're watching Doc Talk and we're sure glad you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. As a rotational crop with winter wheat, the oilseed canola is starting to catch on with producers in the central and southern plains. K-State's Mike Stom has been developing canola varieties suited for the plains region and points to the attributes of this crop. Winter canola is a high value oilseed. The oil that canola produces is approximately 40%, which is about twice as much as what the soybean produces. Canola oil is a very healthy oil for consumers here in the United States as well as around the world. We import approximately 80% of the canola oil that we consume in the United States, so it makes sense for farmers in the Southern Great Plains to grow more winter canola. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner. Dr. Meisner is a boarded internal medicine specialist and a clinical associate professor here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. We're discussing castrating bulls. And we've talked about do it early surgical castration, bloodless castration, pain control. Now, 
not everything goes exactly the right way every time we do it. What are some of the complications that, that can arise from different castration techniques? Yeah, certainly it's a, it's a necessary but not necessarily a benign procedure. You right. know, we, we're going to sometimes expect uh, problems or anticipate problems. Number one uh, would be blood loss or some pretty significant bleeding that can go on with these uh, with the surgical. surgical castration type situations especially. Um, and uh, usually after we get done with these, we're gonna, we're gonna watch the animal in the chute and then monitor them in the pen after we're done um, and look for a steady stream of blood or a drip of blood. We can try to prevent that with some crush type techniques. Um, there's or the Henderson tool, Henderson which, spin, tool yep. yeah, which actually spins it up, um, or even ligate it, and, some, and, and it's a judgment type call. And if I have a certain size animal... Um, and ligation is, is suturing the cord. Suture, suturing the cord. And, things that help us sleep well at night, you know, right. and, and the bigger they are, um, I like to sleep at night whenever I get the opportunity, so I'll throw a ligature, knowing that that's going to be stopping the blood, yep. but it may lead to infection if because I, it if, becomes a problem. If I see one bleeding out in the pen, what, what should I? Oh, then we, we start, you know, you can start looking for the bleeder. Um, oftentimes that's an exercise in futility, but more oftentimes we'll pack it compress it and try to get some sort of a blood clot in that area. Um, so pack the, the scrotum with gauze or uh, what, what kind of material? Yeah, gauze, gauze yeah, it's usually something to, to provide sort of a matrix for a clot. You know, just get a nice clot in there, stop the bleeding, and it'll track out. So, so then um, what about complications that occur with the bloodless techniques? Well, yeah, that's just, I mean, even with the stopping the blood clot, now we have an area that's going to be a nidus of infection. Yep. The bloodless things, we've, we've started out with an area that's going to be low blood flow um, and can lead to some Anero. infection. Yeah, yeah, types of bacteria, probably being tetanus would be the biggest one. I mean, I think that um, surgical castration, doing a lot of those, one year when I was younger, we tried to ban a few calves, and I think we had a, uh, you know, a decent percentage of those that ended up with tetanus and probably it was cleanliness you know mm -hmm. learning about being clean in an environment that's going to limit that but um, certainly tetanus is a risk and so make we try sure, to prevent that. Make yeah. sure we vaccinate with a tetanus toxoid. Yep almost always it's nice to have them have a toxoid on board before we do anything like that. And, and that would be with most any of your eight-way type clostridial yep. and, vaccines. Yep and you're, you're setting up an area which gets low blood oxygen that leads to tetanus kind of an issue so well, no problem. Um, appreciate everything you've done. Appreciate you being on the show today. Appreciate being here. It's, it's always good to have you. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Meisner and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. You've been watching Doc Talk today. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk, produced in cooperation with Drovers Cattle Network and Bovine Veterinarian. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. As a manager of grazing beef cows, the thing that's always bothered me about standard trace mineral supplements is that we, uh, we put them out for the animals to consume, but there's no guarantee that the animals will consume them in the right amounts. Multimin 90 allows us to address at least three specific trace mineral issues that we have here in the Flint Hills. Other grassland types here in Kansas, the midgrass prairie in the central part of the state and the shortgrass prairie out west have their own mineral issues. Multimin 90 matches up with those as well. Trace mineral supplements are also heavy metals, and we have to be careful how we use them, how much we put into animals that might potentially find their way into the human food chain. Multiman 90 is an FDA regulated product. It's important to follow label directions in terms of dosage and route of administration. The route of administration is subcutaneous, usually in the neck area. Uh, there are no risks for injection site lesions or minimal risks anyway for injection site lesions if used appropriately. Uh, what I like as a livestock manager about Multiman 90 is that when I apply that injection, I know that the animal is receiving uh, the four critical trace minerals, selenium, copper, manganese, and zinc at exactly her requirement. I know exactly how much is getting in. 
In our trial at Kansas State University, we used 460 mature cows. Half of these were injected at preg check time during the month of December, and again, about four weeks prior to breeding. The other half of the cattle received a saline placebo. We then monitored reproductive performance during a, a, time, a single timed AI event and the subsequent natural service breeding season. In our study, we got 9% greater AI conception on the treated cattle than on the cattle that received placebo, and our calving distribution was shifted farther forward into the spring uh, in the treated cattle as opposed to the untreated cattle.